Good morning, everyone. Uh, good to have you all back here for week five of weekly insights here from Influence. Um, if you've tuned in before, you know me. I'm Corey Lagrange, Director of Digital Strategy at Influence. And this week, I am joined by my good friend, Eric Dahlstrom, Paid Media Strategist at Influence. How's it going, Eric? Going great. Happy Monday. Awesome. Yeah, same to you. So uh, it's, it's a little custom here for the program. Tell us where you are broadcasting from right now. So I'm actually broadcasting from Influence Headquarters, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, we had to get out of the house today. People were working on the street. The dog would be barking through the whole uh, presentation. <laughs> it's funny because on, uh, on this program, we've had dogs, we've had kids, we've had cats. We've kind of had the whole gamut. So I guess a little construction noise would have been appropriate. <laughs> Wanted to avoid it for my sake. Yep, for sure. So, uh, like Eric said, he's out in the office, and we're going to talk a little bit this week about how you can utilize paid media um, through this pandemic. Um, and then next week, we're actually going to be talking with our director of marketing, Natalie Jackson, on what we can start to expect as things start to reopen as we are able to go back to the office a little bit, start phasing in, um, a little bit of normalcy starts to set in. So that's something to look forward to next week. But right now, I wanna kick it over to Eric to tell us a little bit about what he's seeing on the paid media side. Um, Eric, tell us a little bit about some of the trends that you've been seeing, um, just big picture, what are we looking at? Yeah, so big picture, uh, Influence and our clients have been really fortunate to be in a position where we've been able to continue to operate through the pandemic and in some cases actually thrive. So one message I've been giving to clients is if you need to cut budget for any reason, I'm not here to tell you that that's a wrong decision for your company. I know that it can be a little counterintuitive in times like these to determine to increase your media spend. But in a few cases, that's actually been what the data has been telling us to do. So just high level, what we saw is the week of March 11th, when everything kind of went crazy, uh, at least from a search traffic perspective, we saw impressions decline as people were trying to figure out what they were going to do. It's, we, they were thinking, OK, we're just going to bunker for the next two weeks. And when we come out in two weeks, we can get back to business. And when that didn't happen, we saw our impressions and our clicks rebound uh, through the last week of March and on into April, where uh, some of our clients are actually setting some records uh, for the kind of clicks, the kind of impressions, the kind of sales they've been doing uh, in April. And driven by that is the fact that so many people are home that impressions are going up. There's just more eyeballs on more websites, on especially on the social platforms than they're ever have been and so one good thing for a paid media marketer is just simple economics if the impressions are going up and the demand is the same or maybe even declining as other advertisers have had to try to make tough decisions that's actually driven cost per click and cost per thousand metrics down for our clients where we've been able to get more bang for our buck so as long as you're in a position to stay in the game here it can be a little bit of a boom time. That's crazy to hear. Um, so Eric, um, impressions are up. Are we seeing things like interaction and engagement and conversions kind of following that same suit or is that kind of a mixed bag? Uh, it's down a little bit. And so we're not setting any sort of click to rate records, but the fact is, is that if impressions are up, we're still going to get more clicks into our clients' websites, even with some lower click to rate. And so, again, I say sales are up. That doesn't necessarily mean we're setting any sort of records on e-commerce. Uh, it depends on the client, but just the sheer volume that we're able to do is uh, what's driving our metrics. That's pretty awesome. Um, building those click audiences, I have to imagine, it's gonna be pretty vital for uh, whenever things kind of do emerge on the other side for building some of these retargeting audiences for doing some second touch things. So it's uh, it's always nice to get some inexpensive impressions and clicks for sure that you can kind of snowball into. 
Yeah, and with that, it's important to have the attribution set up. That way we know that uh, if paid media is driving in all these uh, impressions, all these clicks, that we're kind of keeping an eye on those people because people are shopping a lot as well. The time to conversion has increased. I've seen some that used to be three days from the time of first interaction to the time of conversion. That's gone up to about a week. Wow, okay. So kind of just keeping at it, right? Staying, staying, uh, staying like water. Mm -hmm. Yes, stay in the game. They're going to come back to us eventually. That's awesome. So, Eric, I know um, we've kind of talked in the past um, on a couple of episodes about maybe transitioning some of the budget that you had available for other things that obviously aren't going to happen, um, you know, right now, things like in-person events, trade shows, conferences, and stuff like that kind of reallocating some of that budget on the paid side, um, if possible. Uh, tell us, are you seeing any of that? Are you seeing, um, you know, some some different players kind of in the game now that might not have been there before and things like that? Yeah, so a lot of our clients actually have a pretty robust trade show strategy with uh, milestones that we look to, like eight weeks in advance, we want to start advertising for it. We do a little bit of geofencing in the actual hotel and convention center during the week to try and drive people into the booth. And considering that that's not happening, uh, a lot of clients are taking that budget that they would have spent on the trade show and investing it back into paid media. So a few different tactics they're doing. Some are doing web conferences like the one we're doing right now uh, and using paid media to drive uh, signups for that web conference just to try and get in front of the people that would have gone to that trade show. Another tactic that they use for that sort of web conference is to continue using Google search to bid on the trade show name where people are trying to figure out has it been rescheduled? Uh, are we going to still do it next year? Just searching for that trade show at all to say, hey, you're looking for this trade show. Why don't you come to our webinar? We're going to tell you a little bit about our products and services so that you can still get the marketing message we were trying to deliver at the trade show just uh, virtually. And then other clients are just uh, completely reinvesting that trade show budget into uh, what Natalie likes to call a lead magnet strategy. So uh, whatever takeaway you wanted the individual to have, say there was a one-sheeter you were giving out at the trade show, you make that virtual and you start targeting those audiences on LinkedIn or you use your keywords to uh, find the right audience on Google and drive people to that lead magnet to start the conversation for your sales executives. That's really smart. It's a, it's a really nice way to be able to pivot. And um, I know, you know, if, if you're a, like a lot of companies that I've worked for, worked with, you know, these budgets, um, they're, they're use them or lose them in a lot of cases. So mm -hmm. making sure to reallocate them, you know, in a smart way is important. Um, but also a lot of times sales goals don't necessarily change, right? So organizationally, we've still got to hit some benchmarks and reinvesting in a different way is, is, a, is a really, really sound, sound way to do that. And um, there's a lot of really smart things that we can do with targeting options nowadays with different platforms. Um, if someone, let's say I'm an end user and I have an interest in, let's say, uh, you know, we just had presentations at Digital Summit last week. Let's say I'm a consumer and I'm interested in Digital Summit or I, you know, was planning to go to Digital Summit. Are there ways that you can target me in some of these different platforms based on my previous interest in that conference or trade show or things like that? Yeah, so ideally we would have been working weeks ahead of time before the digital summit to make sure we could get some sort of first party data on who you were. And so a lot of trade shows are going to make available attendee lists, which you can upload to the social platforms, LinkedIn and Facebook to begin serving advertising to you while you're there. In addition, there's always the search strategy where if you're searching for digital summit, uh, perhaps we can get in front of you on there. Now, if we weren't able to reach you first party, we can always go just the second party route working with data providers, such as a programmatic ad buy, or LinkedIn has a lot of really great B2B 
uh, tools for this as well. And so we can say we're looking for Kansas City marketers at a certain decision maker status in the following industries. All of those are uh, attributes that LinkedIn is going to allow us to create. So we'll stick you in an audience of maybe 10 to 20,000 really focused users and just start trying to reach you in that way. And then once again, programmatic buys while you're searching around the internet, possibly even connected TV by say, we're just looking for B2B decision makers in marketing somewhere in the Kansas City area and begin serving you ads in that way. Awesome. <clears throat> Lots of ways to pivot, it sounds like. Yeah. So, so one I, thing I said in my blog post that kind of gets at what we're saying here is that just because the trade show didn't happen, you know your customer didn't find what they were looking for. And so now is the time to try and get in front of them. That's true. That's very true. Um, it's uh, probably not as crowded of a space now as it was before all of this either, right? Right, yeah. So as I've said, we've been really fortunate with a lot of our clients being able to stay online. In fact, uh, one of our casualties was because they were getting too many sales through organic. And so there was no sense in spending paid media budget during that time. So they'll be back once they're able to fulfill orders again. But Sure. We've been really fortunate, but not all companies have. And so we've observed it. We can see in the auction insights tool that Google Ads provides for search targeting, we've seen some of our competitors drop off. We know that it's going to be easier to rank on some of these keywords to get a higher impression share on some of these keywords just out of the fact that not everyone was as fortunate as we were. Yeah. So let's say we um, have some people in the audience who find themselves kind of in that middle ground. They're, um, you know, not doing terribly. Their situation has changed, but they have a more limited or, you know, kind of harder to, to separate with budget than they did before. Um, what's some good steps on evaluating platforms, evaluating where they should start, you know, with with looking to invest in some increased spend, um, where does somebody like that start? Yeah, so I'm gonna give two different scenarios here because uh, like I say, every business is different and the type of advice I would give is different. And one is in which I would say, let's cut everything but the bottom funnel. And another is where I would say, let's cut everything but the top funnel. So the bottom funnel would be say your e-commerce, you're going to have someone buy from you directly that day off of your ad click. So you're possibly doing a little bit of customer acquisition through some higher funnel, say social media buys or maybe even programmatic buys. But when it comes to that sort of strategy, those are the first things to go. So we'll say, uh, if it's not getting us a direct sale, we're just not gonna do it right now. We'll kick that can down the line, we'll take that marketing budget and we'll hit it hard uh, at the end of the year, 2021, whenever things can go back to some semblance of normal. And we're just going to focus on sales. Let's spend as much media budget as efficiently as possible to getting sales. So one example of this is where, for one of our clients, I would probably recommend actually raising the ad budget, but in a lot of ways, the budget is what it is. And so what I'm doing is instead of targeting an eight to one, nine to one return on ad spend, we're getting up to 11 to 12. If the amount of dollars I have to spend is set, I'm looking to get the most revenue for every dollar I have. Uh, the other example is where I would say, let's forget about bottom funnel and let's just focus on awareness. So these are the longer life cycle uh, sales where uh, your sales executives are going to have to work a lead for a number of weeks. And the current circumstances are you're not going to be able to meet in person. You're not going to be able to do any sort of in-person onboarding. And so you just figure you're probably not going to get a lot of bottom funnel leads at this time. That's okay. What you want to do with your ad budget now is just go completely top funnel to just remind everyone, hey, we're here when you need us. Uh, just keep us in mind for two, three, four months down the line when you're ready to make buying decisions again. That makes a lot of sense. I guess um, 
it, you know, you, you really have to know your audience and not only know the position of your business right now, but know the position of the people <clears throat> who are your consumers, right? If you're a, if you're a B2C brand and, and, and you're selling e-commerce high ticket items, well, you know, you, you may not be able to do a lot of these direct response kinds of things where people make impulse purchases and things like that when people are, you know, just getting a little tighter with finance. Whereas, you know, if, if you're a B2B, uh, you know, type of business, starting those conversations now and kind of planting those seeds for those longer term turnarounds, it's probably a smart thing to do. Um, you know, it, it, just putting yourselves in the mind of the consumer and your target audience is as important as understanding your current business situation, right? Yeah, Corey, and you and I have spent a lot of time over the last few weeks thinking about <laughs> these sort of problems. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's like, you know, we, we know <clears throat> as marketers, we think a lot about personas. We think a lot about buyer types um, and buyer profiles and things like that. But now more than ever, we've kind of had to humanize those even farther to, uh, mm -hmm. to, you know, add a whole nother layer of context and understanding on top of that, that just because our previous target is um, parents, single moms, uh, you know, two, you know, dual income households, like some of these things that go into a media plan and a targeting profile and things like that. Now we've just got this whole other level of consideration, right? Like uh, time and place, um, you know, uh, it's just, there's so many more considerations to layer on top of these things that make, uh, you know, some of these spending decisions even tougher. <clears throat> yeah. And kind of a, how everything has changed. One example uh, that we've been working with was we are working on pushing out some display advertising and in our image creative was a picture of two people shaking hands. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. guess we're not using yeah. that one anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my friends and I have joked that it's like, sometimes we'll be watching a TV program uh, and we'll see people hug. I'm like, oh, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I like literally yell at the TV. No, six feet. Yeah, <laughs> but it's funny because those are some of the things that you don't consider, right? You know, um, even if your budget, you know, is still available, taking a look at your ad assets, that's so important right now because if mm -hmm. if you're somebody who's kind of launching a high volume of creative assets, you know, you, you never know what that one tone deaf kind of image might be that's in your suite of ads. So take a look at that right now you know, that, that can make or break somebody, right? Because, you know, we know people are, uh, they're aware right now, they're hyper vigilant right now, and people certainly aren't shy to call out uh, tone deaf marketing and advertising nowadays. So that's a really great point to take an audit of your assets. Yeah, and my standpoint right now is you have to acknowledge it. You can't just go on yeah. like nothing happened, but we also don't want to tread into the, in these troubled times territory, because I think we're all starting to get a little sick of that. So our message yeah. for the most part with our advertising has just been a, we're here for you uh, standpoint. Yep, that makes sense. So- Without exactly naming the uh, problem we're here for you about. Yeah, we, we, we don't need to beat people over the head with the message nowadays, right? Yeah, they know. <laughs> Wait, there's a there's a pandemic. I've <laughs> this this uh, direct to consumer brand told me, and this is the first I've heard of it. <laughs> Man, so you know now we're kind of finding ourselves in a time where things are starting to transition a little bit. We've got some states, you know, doing some soft opens, some phased opens. Um, so even since the beginning of March, we're seeing things shift a lot. Is that something that we're also observing on the media side of things where we're seeing one thing in March and now something's kind of shifting as far as habits go or anything like that? Yeah, and just like if everything was normal and we were just going through our typical seasonality, what I like to say is the data will tell you everything you need to know. And so I would say in the last few weeks, some of our conversion rates are starting to recover into pre-COVID uh, types, which is really nice for us at this point because 
our impressions and clicks are as high as they ever were because everyone's still home 24 seven. However, they're starting to come to the end of it and say, okay, it's time to start thinking of buying again. It's time to start thinking of investing in our business, of looking in the products that are going to enhance the way we're able to uh, conduct our business of saying, I just got my stimulus check. Let me go out and do a little bit of shopping for some of the things I need. So uh, that's what I'm seeing on the data end. Uh, when I see this for my advertisers, what I'm trying to do is say, now is the best time to throw some more money into this, uh, possibly even borrowing from uh, Q4 and say, let's do a little bit more right now because we can spend your budget and we know it's going to be effective right now at this point. Yep. You know, we, we, we don't know what the end of the year is going to hold for anyone. Right. Or, you mm -hmm. know, and it, it's, it's kind of been tough to strike that balance, you know, even for our internal marketing efforts on, you know, how much do you double down on what you observe right now in the immediate future versus planning, you know, for, for Q3, Q4 and, and thinking ahead and hedging that way. So um, I, I think now digital media is providing people with kind of a, a safety net's not the right word, but a flexible way to be able to stand things up quickly and experiment and see what's working and what's not, um, which I think is super vital to especially uh, small and medium-sized businesses who need to make smart decisions now um, you know, regardless of what we think we're going to be seeing in three months and four months, um, especially because, you know, when, when you traditionally invest in what we call things like traditional advertising, things like TV and radio and print um, and out of home, you've also got to remember this is an election year. Mm -hmm. So things are going to start getting really expensive towards the end of the year, whether the economy bounces back or not. Um, we're going to have political spending, you know, hitting all of these platforms. Yeah, except for Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good old Twitter, fighting the good fight, right? But yeah, we, we haven't seen that kick in early, the political bump. We'll probably expect to see that in June, like in any normal year. When I start seeing political TikTok ads, that's when I know that, um, <laughs> you know, we're kind of just doomed and we're on the downturn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Well, Eric, well, I appreciate it. We're coming up on time. Um, any kind of parting thoughts or approaches that people can take if they really um, are looking to make some smart decisions now, um, if they're trying to reinvest some budget, if they're trying to move forward and keep their eyes on, you know, the near future and the long-term future, what advice would you give to them? Yeah, so my advice is uh, know your situation. So don't bankrupt the business by trying to spend too much in paid media right now if that's not going to be a good decision for your business but if you're in a position to invest and you have a good strategy around how you're going to reach your consumer it's just a tremendous opportunity to get in front of people to be stronger on the other end of this because uh, impressions are at all-time highs people are home 24 hours a day just looking for something to do looking for something to get their mind off what's going on and looking for ways that they can move forward. And so if your company was going to get in front of them in a trade show in May, uh, now is the time to try and start a conversation anyway. That's awesome. Great advice. Well, everyone out there, uh, we appreciate you being here. One thing to remember, if you do have specific questions regarding your media plan regarding digital advertising. Um, we are still offering one-on-one -on -one 30 minute um, marketing therapy sessions where you can come to us with a specific question. Um, you can send us an email um, to the address that will be on your screen shortly as soon as my computer decides to cooperate. Um, let's see, just trying to bring this on up. This is the point where we have technical difficulties. We made it all the way through. There we go. <laughs> so if you send an email to expert at influence.com with your specific marketing or advertising question, we will get you paired up with the most appropriate person on our team 
to schedule a 30 minute session um, to kind of talk through it with no strings attached, completely free. We just want to make sure that we are there for our community because we know when we all come out of this, you know, on the other end, everyone just kind of leveling up and being on strong footing is going to be, you know, it's, it's just going to be good for everyone. So send us an email, send us your question, uh, and we'll make sure to get you all set. Um, we actually just finished uh, a presentation last week where we talked about some more approaches and strategies for email from the Digital Summit at Home series. So we'll be communicating some of those things that we presented to that audience pretty soon here. Uh, so you can keep an eye on our blog and also sign up for our newsletters at more.influence.com slash subscriptions. You'll get notifications on this recurring live. Um, we'll send you the topics that'll be coming up in the coming weeks. You'll get insights delivered to your inbox and more information uh, straight to you that you can use right here and right now. Um, next week, like I mentioned, I'll be joined uh, by Natalie Jackson, our Director of Marketing, where we'll be talking about what happens next as things start to reopen, as we start to see some shifts again, um, just really talking through what that means to us as marketers and advertisers and you. So again, Eric, uh, thank you so much for uh, sitting in with us this morning. Um, I'm sure there will be some emails uh, requesting some connection with you to kind of talk through some of these questions that people have. Um, and we just appreciate you being here. Thanks so much. Hey, thanks for having me. Looking forward awesome. to it. All right, guys. Well, until uh, next week, you guys have a great week, and we'll see you next Monday, same time, same place.